Hello, everybody. I hope you had an enjoyable lunch, and I hope you actually got some as well. Um, part of the business track, you know, how to get your lunch. Um, anyways, anyways, uh, I'm not going to talk too much. Uh, welcome to the business track. This is the first time a type I actually does do a business track, and the whole thing has come about last year, really, at, in Sao Paulo. Indra and I starting to chat and kind of like realizing that a lot of type designers have a lot of questions about like various parts of design uh, of, of business, such as money. Uh, end user license agreements, all sorts of stuff. And these are all business related. And we felt that it was actually really important that we're actually starting to talk about business. You know, it's one thing to talk about beautiful curves and everything. That's the other thing about the hard realities of making those beautiful curves. And what can we do as an, as an industry and an organization to make sure that we have a level playing field and to make sure that we actually can all make a living out of this ethically, uh, and in many various ways. So that's what I said last year in Sao Paulo as well. And uh, the good thing is that not actually we started talking, but we started talking. So the best thing about the conference last year was this huge discussion round that we had. So I also want to encourage every one of you that we can have uh, at least like three or five minutes afterwards for questions. And I rather skip the introduction of all the people here. You can read in the program or online who's talking here. Everyone knows Jean Baptiste Levy. So rather us introducing the people, we rather open up the discussion afterwards if we're not running out of time. OK? You ready? Then welcome Jean Baptiste Levy. Hi, sir. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, signing up at Type Foundry 101 in 20 minutes. Totally doable, super easy. Uh, I'm, I'm Jean Baptiste, I run uh, a small type foundry called Production Type. Uh, we are a team of uh, five people, about uh, three fifths of them are here, they are awesome, so I uh, have to pay credit where credit is due. Uh, this is all uh, like a return or, or upon experience, so take everything that follows with a grain of salt. Uh, starting up a type foundry is uh, something that uh, I wanted to do for quite a while. I actually did it already once, so that's starting up my second type foundry, which I did in 2014. Well, 2014 was the, the opening of the website. Uh, administratively was uh, slightly before that. Uh, the main question you want to ask yourself when starting a type foundry um, is why? So uh, many, many uh, other people try to uh, answer that kind of question. Uh, these are a few references that I, I uh, gathered to prepare this, uh, this 20 minutes uh, talk. Uh, the Fund Purchasing Habit Survey is a great, uh, is a great report that, that has just been published, um, a much older article by Stephen Coles, and an interview which is also written on experience by uh, Christian Schwartz. Um, start type foundry. Do you have a plan? Means, um, do you have an idea? Do you actually have a view of what you want to do? Sounds stupid but it's actually much more than just, hey, let's put out fonts in the wild and cross fingers and hope that some people will buy it. It's a bit more subtle than that. Of course, by no way, uh, my word is, uh, is, a word, um, is the word, but um, when launching a type foundry, I try to be as thoughtful as possible and to allocate the best uh, the, the optimal resources where I need it. So the first one is maybe do you have a business plan because it's not really about design uh, starting a type foundry. It's mostly about uh, starting a business. That said, um, one of the main reasons, one of the gut reason I had when starting a type foundry was I want to see specific shapes out in the world and I want to be able to see those shapes the way I really have them in mind, uh, meaning my own type designs or type design from other people. Having a business plan is um, not, uh, not a must, it's, uh, it's a recommendation. I did not make any business plan, but it's actually a useful tool. It's just basically just a table and you put um, you put in some place your competitors, your, ad your drawbacks, your advantages. Um, um, it helps sorting out your ideas and finding your weaknesses, if any. Um, 
In my case, there was also a motto that uh, Mathieu Regué, I think he's here, Mathieu Regué told me once, he said, quality is the best business plan, and it sure is. Um, the only problem is that you have to define quality. What's quality? Uh, is it uh, artistical quality? Well, we are not really talking about um, artistical quality uh, today, but it sure matters, and it should be the main, uh, the main quality um, I should have in mind when designing the, the fonts uh, and or uh, commissioning others to design them. Artistical quality is maybe your best friend in starting a type foundry. So it's not only about um, hoping that romantically you'll have a nice flourished typeface with dozens of ornaments. Uh, artistical quality is also, uh, I could say, design quality instead of artistical. Um, that's another quote from Matthew Carter. Uh, this also requires a lot of um, self-investigation, knowing what's good, what's interesting, what is both, and in which cases why um, or how not release some uh, designs. It's not because it exists that, it, that it's necessarily uh, uh, relevant to have it uh, on the market. Um, another thing to consider is that the lesser quality your products have, and by um, uh, quality, I mean artistical quality most of the time, um, the more you'll have to invest in marketing. That's also true. Um, there is such a thing as self-selling products, but um, it takes quite a while before these can sell out by themselves. So uh, invest in artistical quality is much more, uh, is much greater value than investing in, in marketing. Technical quality is also uh, something you, I should, I cared about. But uh, over the years, I learned to care le less and less about the technical quality. Not because the fonts, uh, our fonts are, are sloppy, just because it's uh, rather easy to find and implement uh, technically good fonts and uh, to find and implement good resources because the knowledge is much more accessible than it was, say, five or uh, ten or even five years ago. So care more about artistical quality. Technical quality can also be subcontracted. Um, technical quality means also you have a view as a business person to what you want to serve to your clients. Uh, so define your own standards. They don't necessarily have to be technical, once again, but uh, define a character set, define standardized open type features, and stick to it. Stick to it means you won't have to think about it for a while. It's really helpful in our process to have um, standard and streamlined open type features that we can build and assemble without having to really think about it as long as we, s we follow a few naming conventions or a workflow pattern. Um, this is also maybe a, a, a very technical side of the business that one should not spend too much time upon. Um, define a product line. Um, so that's a weird one to say when you want to start a type foundry because most of the time you, um, you maybe only have one, two, three um, designs ready. Um, having a product line means you have a plan. Um, uh, over the course of the past few years, I've seen lots of foundries uh, starting up with, say, three families. Sounds like a, like a reasonable minimum. Uh, and actually not making past that count uh, whatsoever in the, in the following years. Uh, in the case of production type, uh, we opened up with five different series. Uh, one was a 96 uh, style member family, and the other one had only one weight. Um, <laughs> but that was only the tip of the iceberg, and uh, we, had a, we had a product uh, release schedule for the next coming year with, re uh, with ready releases. Um, actually, the fonts were finished way before the website was finished. And most of the time, it's also something that I see splash, scre splash screens for new opening foundries that last for one, two, three, five years. <laughs> 
So um, this is something that I experienced and I didn't want it to happen again. So we had five families ready and more to come uh, for at least a year. And we had supply in a sense uh, for the next, uh, or plans at least for the next two, three years. Uh, which means I don't have a plan past 2017. <laughs> uh, that's not true. Um, what else? Um, yeah, just just a f um, uh, just a few. Just a side note. Uh, product here is is uh, seen in the sen in the sense of maybe European uh, legislation or at least French one. It does not mean just like in the U.S. regulations that the product is totally disconnected from uh, a designer. It just means you sell goods in need, that case digital goods. So have some funds ready for now and for later is a, is a good plan. Of course delays are fine. Delays are part of uh, running uh, a retail uh, offer, a retail catalog. Just uh, the only thing I say to myself or to the designers in-house or to the contractors <coughs> is that uh, I can cope with any delay as long as there's information going on. Uh, it can last quite a while, but I, I need information that I can rely upon. And there's no such thing as deceiving the people you talk to, in that case, customers, in announcing something and don't, do not deliver. So it's better not to say anything if you're not sure about the deadlines. Well, it's a business track, so let's talk a bit more about business. Um, business is not romance. Uh, if you are committing into it, um, get rid of that um, artistical feel that somehow um, you just be happy in the type world and <laughs> ship the boat and it will float by itself. Uh, uh, business is tough, business is hard, it's difficult. You have to actually like doing business uh, on top of doing the type design. So don't hate it. Um, I learned, I'm, I'm curious by nature, or well, at least I love to define myself like that. Um, so I read about business, I read about marketing, I read about everything that I uh, thought was useful to start up a type foundry. We have the great advantage of uh, selling software or digital goods. And for the past 10, 20 years, there's a lot of literature about uh, running startups uh, available. Startups are, um, are somehow similar to type foundries in the sense that we sell digital uh, stuff, uh, but most of the thing is basic um, business, uh, um, business 101. It's not that different from the startups. Um, also, I had never high hopes about uh, finding more time to design when starting a type foundry. What I wanted to uh, to do more was interacting with uh, other people, uh, uh, talented designers, um, but also web developers and of course customers. Calls, emails, meeting, invoicing, they are all part of the job. Once again, don't hate it because you'll be miserable. So if you want to, fund, to release retail fonts by yourself and at the same time avoid doing all that, then maybe there's something that you'll have to, to revise, to amend. Um, love your clients. They can be great, they can be awful. Um, customer relationship is uh, one of the biggest under, underestimated part in running a type foundry. I get emails daily about questions that are answered in the FAQ or questions that are answered on the website or just even for quoting even though we have a quoting tool on the website. <coughs> Loving your clients means uh, being patient, being, um, being educational. That's maybe in, uh, one of the reasons also why I teach. Uh, and being able to find the right tone to interact with everybody because sometimes you'll, you'll speak to graphic designers and sometimes you'll speak to the, um, to the uh, buying department. And those are difficult people. <laughs> 
So um, you gotta love client support, or if you don't love it, you you have to work with someone who's well informed enough to be able to do it. Um, answering at the same time why this licensing should cost ten times uh, the licensing for this other media, and can I get a discount when I combine uh, this and this font? And um, uh, why don't you have small caps in that one and why is it more expensive while you don't have small caps in that font? Um, those can be very tricky questions. So the more you know your catalog or the more you work with someone who knows your catalog well, the better quality your client support will be. Meet users, of course, they are the one not only using your fonts but actually giving you money for that. So uh, meeting users is uh, one of the smallest social skills there is in running a type foundry. You have to, uh, you have to, even if you're not a graphic designer yourself, you have to like graphic design, you have to like branding, you have to love communication design because uh, those users will actually give you the real feedback uh, and the best feedback there is. It's not the community itself, the type design community, I mean, patting you on the back saying, good job mm -hmm. releasing that 100 alternate uh, types. It's really nice and I love ligatures so much. <laughs> Nobody is, is going to use them in the real world. So it's fine to have uh, professional recognition, but these are not the people who you are actually talking to. Talk to them, um, get feedback, get requests. Um, the fact that we have, from the beginning, uh, free trials on download uh, was because it cuts about half of the client support and we still get requests for trial fonts, although they are readily available on the website. Team up with graphic designers. What does that mean? Um, um, First, they are the users of your fonts, and if you have friends in this area, they can also beta test it. And beta testing is a great way to see how the, the, the typeface performs. But also, naturally, artistically, or even technically, how it performs in terms of does it have um, an interest in existing? Is it here for a reason? Does it fill a hole? or does it, is it useful to someone? And that's also a, a question I keep asking myself when really, before ac um, uh, actually considering a new design is what could it be useful to? And the worst remark that I'm able to, to formulate is it's nice and all, but I don't see how I can use it. And it's, if it has no real use, it's probably difficult to make a business out of it. Also, you may not be a good graphic designer yourself. That's, that's like the plague in the type <laughs> design area. I, I think I'm an average graphic designer. I, knew, I know a few tricks and I have a few tastes that will get me somewhere, but uh, I'm not like state-of-the-art graphic designers and um, some of my colleagues, yeah, I'm not pointing at anyone, but some, <laughs> some people think they are good graphic designers and in fact, it's not quite the case. So maybe review that, have someone review the graphic design around the foundry because you're actually talking to designers. You're not talking to your mom or to yourself or to your partner. Um, and these people evaluate also the graphic design of your foundry. Cool, the money. Let's learn how to make money. Five minutes. How am I doing? Okay, so I still have about a hundred slides. <laughs> um, so buying phones should be easy, fast and fun. Think about your customers. Make it easy to easy and straightforward to buy phones. Uh, but that's, I think, more relevant to user experience. How are the, the others doing it? Um, I have to confess, I bought a few phones from my competitors under fake names, just to... <laughs> <laughs> that's how it's done. Uh, but some of my friends and competitors bought from me. And it's like, mm -hmm. really? Because I liked your process. So uh, anyway, uh, pricing. Pricing is super important. It's maybe the most difficult thing I, I worked on when launching the foundry. This is an extract from our custom-made CMS. Um, so I worked on grids and formula and having incentive steps in the pricing so that it would be only a few euros more 
for an extra style of that families and so on. Uh, work your pricing. It's, it's not easy and it's not really uh, appealing. So um, that's maybe why you should spend more time doing it. Uh, banking. Um, a few return on experience about banking. PayPal is nice uh, if you have a small volume of sales, but it's super costly. It's about double the rate of what a regular bank charges you. Um, card processing is the exact contrary. It's, uh, it's costly also because it's heavy to implement. It needs quite a lot of technical skills, but it's nice when you have, say, um, shopping carts over a thousand euro and the Americans are mad about their uh, credit cards, so you better have that system ready for when they, they come in. Uh, legal stuff. Legal is uh, also something to care about. The IP of fonts in your country may differ for uh, the intellectual property. May di will differ from the IP uh, in another country. Uh, one of the worst countries may be the US, of course. Well, the worst one is actually Pakistan. There's no IP in Pakistan. Um, so no piece of music, work of art, extra will ever get protection so far. The best country for IP, uh, from my own uh, unbiased perspective, is France. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I mean it, France protects its artists. And that's, uh, that goes back from uh, a tradition, a century, a yeah, century long tradition of protecting artists. It's great to sell fonts in France. Um, the biggest one, but I won't spend too much time here, but ULAs, understand them, make uh, something to your own flavor, meaning what are you really, what, what are you really comfortable with and, and what are you not comfortable with. So, what's, what is your ULA philosophy? Get a lawyer now get lawyers, several lawyers, um, get one that specialized in IP or ULAs, get someone specialized in trademarking and brand protection. Um, we work with three different uh, uh, lawyer firms because um, they have special, specialized uh, skills and um, work with a lawyer when you don't need one. That's also a good advice, like before you ever need one. Have someone ready at hand that you already met and uh, do it while your business is healthy, your finances are right, and you are not in trouble or you are not, uh, not even be before being in trouble, but um, when everything's all right. And then come to, to that person if there's anything. It's much better to process that way. Create a relationship with your widescreen. <laughs> uh, create a relationship with your lawyer. Who knows? He might be able to get you a discount. Um, lawyers are super expensive, but it's worth it. Um, working with partners. That's also that could um, be them done to don't be an ass. Like uh, build a trust relationship especially with uh, designers if you want to release uh, other people's fonts. Be transparent on sales. At production type, you can connect on the website and have a live uh, report on your sales if you are a designer uh, with us. Um, be generous and frequent uh, in crediting. Uh, there's no such thing as, a, as one pie with many slices. It's, it only gets, uh, it's only a bigger pie. And I have to hurry. Or stop. Um, it's just the subtract from Kunut's bonus time, it's fine. All right. <laughs> All right. Have a website. Uh, maybe the most interesting, important thing here is have a minimum viable product. Like having, have someone, something small and simple, but that works. Not like a, a bigger thing with complicated and buggy features. And, um, um, and the website is a, is a lifetime commitment. So be ready to have someone at hand or work you on your skills if you have the time. Uh, marketing. Marketing is not a swear word. Marketing is just the um, adequation between products and customers. Um, most of the snobbish designers that are in this room think, oh, marketing, it's just a bunch of guys who have no clue of what we're doing. Uh, it's actually um, useful and interesting. It can be very boring, full of schemes and tables, but uh, you can learn a few things or two about running a business in marketing books. 
work on your channels, that's uh, something uh, easy. For instance, uh, we don't really use the awards uh, at production type so that we can get recognition from the industry. Um, it doesn't mean also that we are not sure enough about the quality of what we do. We use awards so that we have uh, an excuse to say something to the people who want to hear about us, which is a very different uh, uh, thing. Um, social media writing, that's something I'd like to insist on. Um, respect the people who you send stuff to, like newsletters and everything. Um, so uh, our motto is uh, to have a perfect English in our uh, ex written expression because it makes my eyes bleed when I see a friend sending a newsletter and it's full of spelling mistakes and it, it's only basic global English. So um, I try to be interesting and informative in our newsletter and if you are not subscribed, do it. Uh, <laughs> But also, I kind of like the idea of having the reader uh, feel somehow intelligent when uh, reading what we have to say. So I don't write the, my own newsletter, Stephen Coles, uh, he's not around, but um, uh, does that and he has a very flourished and romantic English. Um, also, and I'm almost done, uh, you are not alone in doing this. That's super important. You are not alone for better or worse. So um, this can also be dumbed down to don't be an ass. Um, learn the difference between what's legal and what's legitimate. Uh, it may sound subtle, but it's actually not. Uh, uh, I try to always uh, do both at the same time. Uh, you can sometimes do stuff that's legal, but that's really stupid or really like bad behavior. Um, there's this one uh, Financial Times article that sums up the type business being um, filled with bitter rivalry and rampant plagiarism. Let that t sink in for a second. Um, so mistakes are easily made, easily avoided uh, and also this is a community that talks uh, inside and on the outside, so fuck up and you will actually get called out. Uh, for the better, uh, the type community is a resourceful community. There's lots of documentation uh, available in books or online or through word of mouth. Colleague support matters. I would, production type, for instance, would never be what it is now without the support of uh, companion companion friend foundries, uh, like com uh, commercial types. So it's a big shout out to Christian Schwartz and Paul Barnes, for instance. Um, advice is free, just like support. Uh, building up ULEs, could not, uh, the ULE we have could not have been done uh, if I had not been able to compile the good and the bad stuff from other ULEs. And uh, it's just about asking to, be, to do so. Um, so starting a type foundry, uh, in the end, what, what, is, what is it? It's, is it how serious are you about it? Yeah, of course it is, but it's also how much fun <coughs> do you want to have with a white screen? Um, and this is the, the most important thing uh, at production type is uh, to have serious fun all the time. <laughs> That's it. Thank okay. you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Chris. While Bruno is setting up, maybe we